Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at a MATLAB support package for Arduino. So you all know that Arduino has its own software, right? And of course you can write your uh, code in uh, Arduino IDE, which is basically mostly like C, right? But if you don't like to write in C or you don't, you're not so good at C, you can directly write in MATLAB. You don't need to uh, in order to do a project with Arduino, you don't need to necessarily write in C. Just go to um, hardware support packages under add-ons and find the one for Arduino, just like I showed you for LEGO EV3s, and download and install it, which is this package here. And now you should be able to write in MATLAB. This package, the libraries, the commands will be uh, compiled into C and will be deployed onto the Arduino. So uh, any code you see here and any picture is directly taken from MathWork website. And uh, I have modified some based on the pins and the configurations I had, but uh, so it's not directly copy paste from MATLAB help, but uh, the, the majority of the information is coming from there. So uh, first you need to create, create an Arduino object. So use the command Arduino. The Arduino I use here is Arduino Uno, and it is connected to COM5. In the help document you look, it says COM4, but in your computer it might be COM5. In order to find which communication port it is, you need to go to the device manager on your computer, go under ports, and see which port is attached to Arduino or connected to Arduino. So this is just to create an uh, Arduino object, so let's go ahead and run it. And it shows you that, you see, the communication is through COM5, it's UNO, and then it shows you which pins you have available. So you see it has D2 to D13, A0 to A5, which you can use for analog and digital. The, for PWM pulse width modulation, you have D3, D5, 6, 9, and 11. Analogs are A0 to 5. And... Uh, you can, uh, the one that I installed is a servo library, but you can install other libraries and you can also communicate in uh, other uh, modes of communication other than simple pins, right? So we'll get to those later if you have time, but um, what we want to do is to show you major commands here. The first one is if you want to know what kind of configuration a pin has or set a specific configuration for a pin, you can do that. For instance, here I say, hey, uh, on Arduino board, what kind of pin is pin A4? So I use the command configure pin and say, hey, what is it? And you see it says unset, means it's not set yet. Or if I want to set it, for instance, I want pin D3 to be a pull-up. So I say, what? Go ahead and configure pin D3 to a pull-up pin. And it does that for you, right? So you see, you can do that here, and it's actually connected to my um, speaker. So let me uh, turn it off for a moment, okay? And uh, maybe I want to comment this, but that's okay. So I made it on set. And uh, now, one of the first thing we want to do is to uh, basically uh, write a, a voltage to a digital pin. And that digital pin in this case is attached to my LED. So I recreated this circuit here. The only difference is I attached it to D9 in the help it's D11, but it doesn't matter. So here I use the command write digital pin and I write a voltage of one, which is five volts to D9. So it's gonna turn the LED that is attached to D9 through this blue cable it is going to uh, basically um, uh, send a 5 volts to it, the other side of it through a uh, resistor. The other side of the LED, the shorter side, is connected to the ground. And then it waits half a second, then it sets it to zero. So it's going to turn it off, waits again, and keep going for five times. So for five times, you're going to see this LED watt turning basically uh, on and off. So it's going to blink. Okay, so here I'm going to um, uh, run my command, but um, I'm going to uh, turn my screen to large size so you can see it better. So this is my system. Oops. 
Okay, let me see if I can bring these pins down a little bit for you. There we go. And the LED is off right now, but now I'm gonna uh, run this for loop for you and you can see that. There we go. Two, three, four, and five, right? So you see, I could turn it on and off five times. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, do something maybe a little bit more interesting for you. So now we want to use pulse width modulation, PWM, and by changing either the duty cycle, which is the percentage of the time that the signal is on, as opposed to the entire, as compared to the entire length of the signal, which we call duty cycle, or with the voltage of the PWM signal, I'm going to basically uh, turn the LED to be brighter or what? Darker. So I'm going to dim it and then brighten it. And so here I attached it again to D9. It's the same LED. But um, here I go in 20 steps. Each step I multiply I, which goes from 1 to 20, by this number 1 over 20. So the duty cycle goes from basically uh, 1 over 120, 5% to 100% or 1, right? And then I pause. So first it's going to go brighter. Then you see that it's going to be 1 minus ii times brightness. So it starts at basically 95% and goes down to uh, 5%, okay? Or 0 in this case. So you're going to go brighten and then you're going to go darken and you do it with duty cycle. In the next part, I do the exact same thing, but I use what? Write PWM voltage. So I change the voltage of the PWM and keep the duty cycle uh, fixed, whatever it is. And what? Uh, using the same technique, I can still what? Turn it uh, basically dim or turn it bright. So here... I'm going to go through those uh, parts of the code, but I'm going to, again, make it bigger for you. So first, let's go through duty cycle. Run. See, it's getting brighter. Now it is going to start go darker and turn off. That was with duty cycle. Now I run it with voltage. See, turn brighter. Then what? Turn darker. Okay, so that was what, that was a, um, basically, a PWM signal. So there are two commands for PWM. One of them is uh, write PWM duty cycle. The other one is write PWM voltage. And as I showed you, not all pins in Arduino are uh, used for PWM. Only those that I showed you in the beginning are um, used for PWM. So make sure you connect to one of them. The next one is to read an analog voltage from a pin, and that pin uh, gets the values from a potentiometer. So what we did here is we basically brought the potentiometer and connected it, uh, the one side of it to zero, one side to high voltage five, the other side we connected to one of the pins, one of the digital pins, so it gets a voltage through that pot, and then uh, this is the signal that it reads through the potentiometer, and I can use that signal to change the brightness of what my LED. So I can pass that signal to D9, so I can dim my LED this time or make it brighter, but through the amount of turn of the potentiometer. So you see here, I uh, consider some time, and this time is not necessarily just in seconds. So the first thing I do, I use the command read voltage. And through pin A0, which this one is connected to, okay, this potentiometer, the output of it, I read the voltage and then pass that voltage to what? To pin D9, and I reduce the time, and I pause it so you can see it. And as it goes down, ultimately, the reading from potentiometer stops, and it goes back to whatever it normally gets from pin D9. Okay, so here we're going to run this portion of the code and we use the command read voltage analog from what? From a potentiometer. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, show you that part here. So in this case, this is my potentiometer you see in blue. 
and it is connected to uh, pin A0 and uh, that voltage as I said is going to be sent through this uh, blue wire to the LED. So uh, first I'm going to uh, run the code. Okay, you see it's very bright. Now I'm going to turn my pot and look what happened. You see, I'm turning it and it goes dark. And I can turn it back and it goes what? Bright. And I can keep repeating that and by turning this pot left and right, I can what? I can make my signal bright. Now here you see it stopped. Why? Because that uh, time that I used in my MATLAB code stopped, right? So if I go back, you see here, that time of 200 stopped. So now it goes back to whatever signal it is currently receiving from the 9. Okay. So this was uh, reading an analog signal. And uh, finally, uh, the last thing I want to show you is to read a digital voltage this time. I mean, I have one more, actually. I, this is not the final one. There is one more. I want to read a digital signal, not an analog signal, and control a speaker with it. So I'm going to read the digital signal through a switch. So this push switch, I push on it and I can get a zero or one, which is zero or five volts basically. And using that, I can turn the speaker on or off. So here you see, I connected a pin, I configured pin D3 to onset. This is the one I'm gonna use to attach to the speaker. And the speaker here only has two wires. One of them goes to ground, the other one directly goes to pin D3. And D6, which is going to be attached to the switch, I use it as a pull-up. And uh, you know why we use pull-up. If you don't, you can look up pull-up registers and see why when we uh, basically connect a switch to a pin, we convert that pin into a pull-up. So, or you can say uh, input and pull-up, right? So it is input already, but we add a pull-up to it. So there is no random variation in the input of the signal. And you see here, I'm using a while loop again, and say while I have time, read digital pin, right? So read digital pin, go read and uh, read the signal from the one coming from the switch, D6. If the status is zero, which means uh, basically uh, zero and one for the switch is pressed and not pressed, okay? If it is, in one scenario, go ahead and play a tone. This play tone is for the speaker. So go to pin D3, which is attached to speaker, and play a tone of frequency 1200 hertz for one second, else go ahead and play for zero seconds, which basically means mute it. Reduce the time, pause, and keep going. So this time, the speaker is going to buzz or not buzz based on whether I push that uh, switch or I don't push the switch. So let me go ahead and show you this is my switch that you can see here right that is my switch and uh, this guy here if you can see it this one is my speaker so let me go ahead and run for you okay so you see i'm not i have not pressed the uh, status is zero now if i press listen right you see so it read this switch push and this speaker is generating my uh, signal. Okay, so that was reading a, a digital pin and using it to turn on a speaker. And finally, the thing that I know you probably care the most is uh, to run a servo motor. And here, for servo motor, when you create the Arduino object, you have to import the library with it. So you have to, here, since um, my A is just created without library, I clean it up and recreate the Arduino object. But I say import also the library servo, so I can use the commands for the servo, okay? So you see now the library servo is uh, added to the Arduino. So I can use the command servo to create a, a servo object. So here I say connected to pin D4. And D4 here is the control signal of the servo. The other two signals go to ground and high voltage, 5 volts. 
The control signal of that, the orange one, is going to be attached to pin D4. So let's attach it. And now I can use the command right position and give it the percentage of the total maximum angle it can rotate. So if I say zero, it goes to uh, the zero angle. If I say one, it goes to the maximum angle. Re de depends on how much the maximum angle is. Is it 180 degrees, 270 degrees, or how much? Okay, so look here. If I say that, it's going to take it to one side. This one is going to take it to the other side. And any number between 0 and 1 is going to rotate it somewhere in the middle. If I want to know how much it has rotated, again, it's going to give me that ratio of the current angle to the maximum angle. I can do that with the command read position. And it gives me that position. And at the end, I have to clean up the Arduino and the servo objects. So let me go ahead and uh, show you. Uh, first thing is I'm going to uh, do those right commands and this is my uh, servo down here is one of these uh, tower pros okay let me bring it a little bit closer to you so first I'm gonna uh, send it to one side by right position s and zero okay this is this end of it and now I send it uh, to the other side You see, it moved there, and I can use, say, 0.5 or anything. And uh, let me do a 0.5 as well, but let me bring this guy down so you can see. So this one, this time I say 0.5 or 0.4. And now if I use the command a read position, it should give me that 0.4 that I commanded it. You see? So it says it's 0.4 of the maximum angle, whatever the maximum angle is. In this case, it's close to 180. So uh, this was uh, some basics with Arduino. In my future videos, I'll try to show you more about reading uh, other sensors, working with other uh, basically actuators, motors, and so on, and basically show you how to use more uh, MATLAB, more of MATLAB support package for Arduino. So hopefully this video was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.